the Grey Hat Beard podcast. Okay, welcome back to part two of show eight of Grey Hat Beard. In the, the first part, we went through some uh, great bits of news and things we've read recently. But in this half, we're going to try and get a little bit more focused. We're going to try and talk about how you can be productive, how you can get work done. So this isn't specifically at all about remote work, but probably is quite a hot topic for people at the moment. Uh, and Al, I know you talk a lot about, especially in the Microsoft 365 space, how you can uh, track work. So uh, why, why don't you kick us off? Yeah, so it's an interesting subject, massive subjects. You can have lots of conversations around, you know, what work is and how you track it. But I think at the moment, it's a, it's a really interesting area for us all personally in terms of how we manage our own time. Because, you know, a lot of us are used to working in the context of a team, an office with other people. Um, and that kind of keeps us moving, keeps us going forward because we're talking about the work that we're doing. When we're all remote, it, it does turn to, into something slightly different, trying to stay focused, trying to not keep looking at all of the things that are distracting you in a different environment. Because, you know, if you're like me, you're in a room that's got all sorts of interesting things that I could just spend a lot of time going off and looking at. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Gary, your, 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 your white wall is, uh, is, for, for is those not quite as interesting. We, we, we do record this on YouTube, so you can go and have a look at those. Uh, Gary has a fairly uh, minimalist room, I think it's fair to say. Boring. <laughs> <laughs> I was being polite. <laughs> but yeah, I think it's, yeah. it's, it's really interesting how we, how we try and prioritise and stay on top of things. I've done lots of sessions over, you know, how we manage work using tasks and project and things like that over the years but I've also done sessions on productivity in terms of you know how once we know what tasks we need to do how do we actually get our head into the right space and get them done without being distracted by things and it, Microsoft had put a, a blog up um, this week yesterday actually around managing your time from Outlook uh, which has tons of really good tips and tricks in terms of how you you know, can add in different calendars in there, how you can use to do, how you can take an email and turn it into a task or an event. Um, it, and it's got some really useful tips and tricks, um, which if you're new to sort of productivity using using Teams and, and Outlook, then that's that's really useful. I think for me, the biggest thing is to do. I, I live by to do. Um, if you haven't come across to do, um, it brings in all of your tasks that are personal, but it, if you're using Office 365 as well, it has planned tasks that have dates on them, but it has assigned to me as well. So they bring in tasks from Planner. So you've got more visibility if you are using Planner and Teams, you've got more visibility of tasks that are assigned to you from multiple different locations in terms of those different teams, but also your personal tasks. And with To Do, you can also create you can flag an email and have those come in as well which is really useful because you know most I, of us I live think, by email still yeah I, I was gonna say when i first saw this article or saw the headline for this article i was like oh everyone's gonna start using unread emails as their way of tracking tasks in the old ways but i think this is showing how you can still be based in outlook and use a lot of the other great tools such as to do to get more effective with it so it, exactly yeah. as you say don't don't leave that as unread and yeah. it's a task that you need to go back to so you can track it more effectively as well. Yeah, and you know, there's there's lots of ways that there's not lots of approaches and techniques for, you know, trying to achieve inbox zero. If that's, you know, a measure of how effective you are with no no emails in your inbox, you know, it doesn't mean that maybe your folder with emails to action is ever zero. You might always have a constant churn of emails, but it's trying to make sure that you know what you're doing and that you're staying on top of things. Um, and and, and you're prioritising effectively. It's not just the latest mail that you jump on. Yes, and yeah. prioritise, you know, we work based on, you know, projects, billable work. So therefore we have, you know, an allocation of tasks that we need to do that comes through from other systems. So, you know, it might be project server, it might be project for the web. But those tasks, it might be as you might be board. sales winching in your ear and again. Yeah, it might be your boss just just hammering you on teams every five minutes. So many different ways that, you know, you can have your your priorities changed. Um, 
and I think you know one thing is to be able to see all the things that you need to do in one place the mm. other thing is then to be able to say how can I focus how can I remove all of the distractions that are going to dis- detract from my focus so that I can actually get things done I think it's mental focus as well is that if you know I, I'm you talked about inbox zero I like to have inbox zero but the way that I do that is that if I have something to action I will flag it and that will appear in to do but I will mm. I will archive it because I don't need to see it in there I've already dealt with it I've moved it out of my inbox I've moved it into mm. my task management yeah. I can yeah. then go back through to do and get that email and reply to it but when I go back to my email I don't see it whole list of things and thinking oh do i need to pick that up or anything and then reread them it's i've i've basically vetted them said i need to do something but it's over here and i'll come back to it when i'm doing other things because otherwise you can end up with all these different systems and trying to keep on top of them in your head is yeah. just a bit of a nightmare as whilst you're trying to do anything else and to do gives you that space to go mentally i know i need to do something i'm just going to park it here yes and, I can deal with it when I need to deal with it. And, and it allows you to prioritize because because often a lot of my unread emails are like, that's an interesting article or that's interesting. I want to read that. But now is not the time. And in the past, I would have left that unread. Now, by putting in to do, you can have a folder of interesting stuff to look at later when I get time. Oh, so just on that, though, which is great. If you're using Twitter on a mobile device, you can send yeah. to to do. And then have your tw- your Twitter link as a, a to do, yeah, which is fantastic. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's so many things that that to do does that consolidates everything that you need to do into one place. Um, mm. And I think it, you know, it's I think there's also a power in saying, you know, I can show people to do, and I can say to my boss, these are all the things that I have to do. You help me prioritize these. You know, there's yeah. there are there is that visibility when you can bring everything into one place there. Uh, yeah. And I think the, the other thing with to do that I love is the my day functionality. So that capability to say today, I'm going to put three, maybe four things that I'm absolutely going to do. And the others can be prioritized. But these are things that I have to do today that uh, I'm going to focus on and get done. So instead of having a list of about 30 or 40 things and seeing one or two, maybe three disappear, you still feel that that pain that you've got on there. If you've just got three things and you see that get emptied, you get that feeling of accomplishment. You feel that you're actually moving dopamine on. Dopamine hit in the brain. Absolutely. The satisfaction um, of achieving something. Such a big fan of the my day where you can achieve, actually get something done from there. And if you're not sure what you're meant to be doing, you're not going back to a long list and trying to go, well, actually, what's the priority on there? You've got those three things. Boom, that's it. If you're not yeah. doing those, something's going wrong. Which is, it's an ideal world that it works for some <laughs> yeah. people. And, and obviously, I think it's really yeah. important to say that that doesn't work for everybody because, you know, not everybody's role is in the same the same sort of space. But yeah, it, it is an aspiration that we should all aspire to, to say, you know, I've checked my email. I know what I need to do today. Right now, I'm going to get it done because that's what I've committed to. Mm-hmm. And I think that's where it then turns into how do you make sure that you are using your time to focus on those things to get those things done mm-hmm. yeah i think the, the the way of working i'm pretty sure that we'll all work in different ways as to how we manage our tasks so we talked about this in the past you know uh, kev you like your three big items for the day um mm-hmm. you know that's one way of doing it there's other ways of doing it the methodologies one that i've been looking at recently is gtd getting things done yep. which has this idea of you have an inbox and everything goes in the inbox it doesn't mean you're going to do it it's just it might be something that you want to do it might be you've had a conversation with someone and they've kind of you know said oh would it be good if we could do this right okay get it down into your in list in to do mm. and then go through and actually review them and go do i actually need to do anything with this do i need mm. to put it on a someday list and come back to it so it needs to be a read list or a watch list but actually other things that are part of the project and they need to be done and, and kind of managed and you know, I've, I've been trying to do that with varying degrees of success um you know but it's one of those things that i think when you come up with these processes you have to find one that's good for you and then stick yeah. to it yeah, and it, but I think the other thing about that is that what you were building there is habits and habits take yeah. time. You have to take the time and say, right, I'm going to force myself to do this for, you know, a period of time. 
say you say two weeks and then you review it after two weeks and they go well, what's working what's not working mm -hmm. build on what's working and try and address what's not working and then carry on building on it because those sorts of processes when they work they work really efficiently but mm. there will always be exceptions and you know i so i have a, i have a process that i use but that doesn't mean that after a month my inbox doesn't have a lot of things that i just haven't had the time to do yeah. um but then there is you know i have another process for tidying stuff up and reviewing it all and going i haven't done it within that time so therefore it's probably not relevant anymore and mm. it's those sorts of things that you build up the processes over time and, and, and it's also it's also why having these conversations putting this out on the podcast for people to to listen to and think about probably lots of you listening to this are thinking yeah i do that and others are thinking oh i did that and i've stopped i've gradually drifted away so every now and then listen to these things come back to it again and uh, try and sort of get back to thinking that way yeah i think what you were saying there are is it's it's what your what your goal is is to work on the right thing at the right time that's that's the, the reason why why we do all this. If if it's not that might that might have been a task that you were saying then about oh you've not done it. Well actually did it need to be done? Was it relevant? Yes. Yeah, yeah. It's not it's not that it was oh you've got to do every single task. It's everything has got a level of prioritization. There's only so many hours in the day. Yeah. Actually, if you're going to not do something, let it be something that's of a lower priority and a lower impact. Not Absolutely. Really, forget about the thing that's the really important thing. yeah i mean it's it's the prioritization is the key thing for all of us it's, it's actually the most important thing you can't put things into my day and yet unless you know they're the, the prioritization for your day the priorities because if you have 10 tasks and you know you can only get three of them either you need to make a call or you need to ask you know somebody else to make a call on what you actually do and then do those things um, and that's that's a, it's a really important element of it because I can write down on a piece of paper all of the tasks that I've got to do. They're just a brain dump of oh I've thought of them in this order. That doesn't give us the the easy ability. And it's another thing that to do has. You know you can drag the tasks up and mm. down to actually say right I'm going to start at the top. Now I'm going to work through them. I'm going to challenge slightly and, and possibly a little controversially because uh, I think when people have a lot of things to do that they feel under a lot of stress and often it's just rubbish things to do. Um, Gary and I, you know, we love doing documentation and, and writing things up and hate being able to write nice code and do interesting new technologies. Mm -hmm. yeah, one, yeah. One thing I would say is try and put some time that maybe it's not the highest priority, but every now and then make sure you've got a few tasks that are more interesting to you to keep you going to keep your mind again especially when you're stuck at home i do think it's worth getting some tasks like having a podcast you know i love these conversations getting the time and making sure you do these uh, i think helps make you more productive in the other things Absolutely. so if you carry on doing things that you don't enjoy doing spending hours and hours in documentation it's going to take even longer you're going to take even longer with those so occasionally stopping and going right let, let's do something that gets my head back in the game gets me doing something yeah. i enjoy uh, and then come back to it later. So, so there's 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 an approach for that. So, <laughs> if you if, have you heard of pomodoros? Yes. So, the, uh, yeah. They're like cherry tomatoes, aren't they? They are. They are based based on um, a process invented by an Italian who used a, a kitchen timer in the shape of a tomato. Hence, pomodoro. Um, but the pomodoro approach means that you set the timer for about forty minutes and within that 40 minutes you focus on the task at hand you don't look at email you don't look at facebook you turn your phone off you ignore everything else for that time and then when you're done you have spend five minutes doing something else and that might be checking your email checking your phone checking twitter checking facebook and then you start another pomodoro another block of 40 minutes to actually focus again and the benefit of that is that you are spending a solid 40 minutes which may not sound like a lot but actually you can get a phenomenal amount done in 40 minutes if you are not distracted by all those other things mm -hmm. but then you've got those built-in breaks to actually look at other things and then after you've done four of them or however many you choose four is probably a good number you have a longer break to go do something else now you can take that approach as a personal productivity um approach to increase your productivity on what you're doing but you can also take the same approach of 
I'm going to spend time doing what I'm, I'm supposed to do and then take a break. You can do that and say, well, I'm going to do four Pomodoros and then I'm going to do two on something that's more interesting. And then I'm going to go back and do another four on something that's less interesting. So that you, you know, you're bringing the coding thing in, you know, yeah, I don't, I'm not allowed to do very much on production systems and code. So I just dabble and create stuff. But we, we've seen your code. That's good. Yeah, it's good that <laughs> I'm not allowed to do production stuff. Yeah. But that's, you know, getting that satisfaction, as you say, of doing something that is more, maybe more creative, maybe more attuned to what you're interested in. So long as you've got the discipline, and again, it comes back to building those habits. It is the discipline of saying, I've turned off all of my notifications, distractions. I'm going to use D&D, do not disturb on Teams. I'm going to not have all of my notifications popping up for every new email that comes in, every new Teams notification that comes in. And then I'm going to focus for that period of time. That's a good way to balance out making sure you're doing what you need to do, staying on top of all of the, the it's probably a bit disingenuous to call it noise, but it is just noise, isn't it, that comes in all day. Um, noise, but then, yeah, yeah. yeah, planning what you're going to do, you know, if you align that with to do and go, well, I've got four tasks to do today, three of them are really boring and one of them is really interesting, you know, splitting it up at convenient times, that, that that's an approach that will be, um, will help the productivity. And the mental sanity as well. It's, uh, I, I'm going to say it's hard to do. It uh, is. Yeah. I, I don't. I, you know, we, 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 <laughs> we're talking about it here and making it sound like, yeah, you just do this, you do that. I, I don't think it's an easy thing to do. And to be able to not reply to those emails, to turn them off, have that nagging feeling at the back of the head that maybe there's something more important that's come in, is hard to do. But I absolutely agree it's, it's important. So, so. It, so there is there is a so. When I do a productivity session, I ask people about emails and about expectations around emails in terms of what is the SLA for responding to emails in your organization? Most people go, well, I don't know, I've never been told how fast I have to respond to a, an email. <laughs> well, if you don't reply five minutes ago. <laughs> yeah, but there's, you know, the, um, the, the approach of saying, well, actually, I'm going to you know, respond within 24 hours. If you set that expectation, mm. then you see what happens because that gives you that breathing space to go, well, okay, people are going to ring me if they have something that's a higher priority. There are other ways that are more direct in terms of needing that response or escalating something to make it a higher priority for your day. And that's a really important sort of management yeah. because we've got so many different things that come in all the time set an expectation around how we prioritize those ourselves yes i will answer my phone but i won't necessarily respond to your email managing that expectation is is a vital component because otherwise as you say kevin you may be thinking well actually your boss's you know default form of communication is to send an email so you need to be checking it every 10 minutes you know that's that's not going to be conducive to you know deep work and focus and actually yeah. working or, or as you say have that conversation with them and you could set up flag so you could use uh, power automate that every time you get an email from specific people it also sends you a text or do, does something yeah. uh, whatever way you want to connect so that you get those alerts come through uh, and, and not others so use the technology that's you, there to and control got, that as well team so teams is really good for that because yeah. um, you've got a, pri a, a priority list Mm. for people who will come through even if you're in do not disturb so you know you can manage it and you know the um the analytics that microsoft will do the my analytics will tell you you know how you're working and how productive you are as well and it's taking that takes a lot of the the drive from uh people like cal newport who have done done a lot of work in this in this area in terms of how to how to work effectively um so it's 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 a really interesting subject and not enough organizations pay it enough enough yeah, attention to yeah. make their staff yeah. more productive i think it, it's it comes back to the etiquette again doesn't it uh you know to what we've discussed previously it's the you know what is acceptable what's not acceptable within the organization um you know there's different ways of communicating with people are you using the right tool for communicating mm. for your needs if you need something to be done quickly is email the right choice? That might yeah. be 
the right way in your organization if you're heavily influenced by email. But if you're not, that can easily be missed. Um, and it's then is it the problem? Is that a problem with the person who you're communicating with or the way that you have communicated? And I think yep. there's a diff, there, there's an element to say if someone sends you an email that you're just going to pick that up and you're going to reply because they've asked for you to reply at that particular time frame, which yeah. is maybe not manageable because they don't know what your level of work is at, at that time. It might yeah. be that you know, you've got things on and 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 having for, having you to stop what you're doing to then focus on that has an impact on the other work that, that yeah because it because it um, never takes it never takes five minutes does it <laughs> no uh, and, and i think that's one of the, the biggest things and kev you were saying about you know we're talking here as if oh yeah all our task management is absolutely perfect and uh, yeah. you know i could say there's lots of different processes that i've tried you know i've tried pomodoros i've tried this gtd i'll go back to it and i'll probably go back to pomodoros again and it is building those habits and building those habits yeah. is really hard and it's made harder by the scenarios that we're talking about because it's easy to just default to the well i've been sent an email i'll just reply to it Mm. And you've kind of undone Absolutely. what you're trying to do. You're trying to make things better, but you're falling back to, well, okay, I'll just send that email and, and maybe not protecting that time and setting those expectations. Uh, and and I think that, like that is key, D &D. those expectations. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, I, and I think the expectations is, is always an interesting one to communicate because uh, mm. I know I think you've, you've got a footer on your email, don't you, Gary? Uh, yeah, we'll do got a, that one yeah, I've got, a, got a signature on your email that says, um, if you want to, if you want me to respond, flag it as uh, high priority. Otherwise, it will take an amount of time to respond. Yeah. And I think, you know, that's that's partly using the tool correctly to say I've got yeah. a footer. It's setting expectation and it's saying you flag it as high priority. That's what that that capability is there for. So and then and I do the same. I have exactly the same the same footer. And I have a view your, in your says working hours may be different. My working hours may be different to yours. Yeah, you know? yeah. Because I might send an expectation. Yeah, I and mean, it's then just using the tools as they're designed to be used. I've got a, a search view that says show me all the high priority emails that have come in in the last week, and that's it. That's that's what I look at rather than all of the the noise. Because then I I spend a pomodoro of a day going through and looking at all the email first thing in the morning. That's yeah, this is interesting. I um, mean, you know, I quite like the uh, my analytics focus time. So it puts the blocks yeah. into your calendar is that it's interesting where you position that focus time. Um, so by default, it likes to go, oh, you're free at nine o'clock. Bang, I'm going to stick it in at nine o'clock. But actually, sometimes you want it just after that because you want that hour to mm. maybe just, you know, focus on what am I going to do for that 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 day. And, you know, it might be a time that you can actually speak to people and it's your open free time and say, you know, if you need to get a hold of me, you can get a hold of me at this time. I've that's, got time to focus. That's, and, that's and a, on my yeah, that's a really interesting point because that concept of saying office hours you know, an open door policy for a period of time can work really yeah. well, you know. So let everybody know that you're spending, you know, nine till 10 o'clock in the morning. And if they've got something that they need to speak to you about, speak to you then. Then the rest of the day you're going to be focusing. It's virtually like being out of office. And that's that works very effectively as well, especially if you're doing what you two both said that you really enjoyed, which is writing documents, you know, then that, that actually works really well. And I, I think these these are all great uh, bits of etiquette of maybe how you use Microsoft 365. Probably a good time to shout out about our etiquette of Microsoft 365. I think it's quite a few things here we've mentioned that we probably haven't put in there that we can add. Certainly that idea of putting in your signatures, setting expectations in how you work. Uh, I think it's a great one. So um, we should probably yeah, listen back to this and get a few into there. <laughs> there, there is there is one thing which I think is quite important, and we've had conversations about this in the past, Al. What do you listen to when you're focusing? <laughs> um, and, and, yeah. and it's you know having that 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 music playing. Sometimes you've got music that is like you know, if you want to do exercise, you'll play something at like uh, you know higher higher beats per minute. Whereas actually for focusing, you want something that maybe a little bit a little bit different. Uh, I quite like there's a concentration playlist on Spotify. Um, yeah, that's you know, a good focus on, one. Yeah, yeah, it's focused. There's actually kind of uh, the scientific mm -hmm. research about uh, the beats per minute 
on in the music that actually helps you kind of concentrate and you know uh, helps with your breathing and things which is which sounds nuts but it, it all helps you yeah, know, absolutely. That focus. There's, there's also the whole psychology about how your brain reacts to things that are new so if you're listening to something with words in it you're spending more mm. effort listening to those words uh, and also if you listen to music you've never listened to something will catch your ear so the spotify playlists yeah i listen to a lot of those but i'll be going through a concentration playlist and something will catch my ear and i'll go what is that then and i'm off at a tangent going oh who is that yeah i need to get more of their yeah. music um yeah, but yeah. if you listen to things that are familiar um then you know you will get into the zone of i've, I've just my head is relaxed i don't have distractions and then off you go and i think the, the beats and per I minute this... i was i was found yeah. you know faster music for coding slower yes. music oh. for writing <laughs> so, same thing. Yeah. so so for me yeah. stuff like uh, orbital some some of the slow ones some of the more ambient things are great for doing documentation and kind of calm you need to think about that doing coding chemical brothers is a great one prodigy very loud yeah. uh, even go back to some sepultura and pantera and classic yeah. stuff like that yeah, very absolutely. very loud yeah. <laughs> it works absolutely beautiful for me. So Friday afternoon coding with that uh, absolutely yeah. helps. And I think and I think the, the other thing I've noticed differently is uh, I've got a little Google um, mini in the room and use that to play music. But if I really want to focus the noise cancelling headphones, listen to the same music, it really puts me a lot more in the zone and just can, takes out all other noise and really gets some focus. And I t if I do that all day, it gets a little bit weird so I, I try not to sit there with this, the same headphones on all day and i might even listen to the same music just switch between different things so you don't always have to have one way of doing it noise cancelling headphones also great if you work in an office and you want to focus you can knock out the background noise of the the office it really really do make a difference on yeah. there and the, the other thing i'd say is uh, especially for those working at home at the moment is move rooms you've got such opportunity we, we're lucky with our office that we can go and work in the um we've got sort of open desk policy so we can move to different desks we can go and work in the, the canteen area and things like that when we are in the office make use of that so have if you have got the opportunity have meetings in one place when you're doing a document you can go to another place you know you've got a nice comfy chair or even outside i've done quite a few uh, bits of work outside when it's when it was good weather think about moving around because that's that breaks that kind of monotony it breaks the way of going through there and lets you focus back on the work again rather than just getting distracted by being in the same place and getting fed up with it moving to different areas take into account comfortable chairs you know we're going to worry about our backs and our necks and things like that but getting into different places for a little bit really can help you um, focus on different things so I, I will always do my meetings in the office if I'm doing coding uh, especially at the moment when I'm looking after the kids as well we'll go and sit with them while they're staring at YouTube and doing other things just gives other ways of breaking through and uh, you can't you're not going to be focused eight hours a day so don't try and be yeah. and I think that's really done the brain is like a muscle it gets tired mm. and yeah. you know you will you will you will not be able to either be in meetings all day speaking to people all day it's really hard work especially depending who you're speaking on present a company <laughs> excluded obviously yeah, um, you're energized right absolutely <laughs> absolutely but yeah it's right you can't do the same thing all day and if you do have to you know write documents all day then it's really hard work coding on the other hand is a whole lot easier isn't it we could we could all do that you know 18 hours a day and not be tired you see i've got the bags under the ice <laughs> till half 12 trying to get something sorted last night because it was bugging me so oh. yeah but that's the motivation way. isn't it, it yes. it's interesting so the uh, i have one album that i usually put on when i'm coding and i want to get into deep thought and that is daft punk's live album uh live concert <laughs> brilliant i put that on and it I'm just away. I'm happy coding, but uh, writing yeah. documentation and things, I'll I'll get the the, the soundtracks open. Yeah, I'll get so the, the writing go through the films. Writing documentation is film soundtracks for me. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, nothing more epic than listening to. Uh, so basically, any of the Batman um, kind of uh, soundtracks. Hans Hans Zimmer. Hans Zimmer. Hans yeah. Done. Yeah. yeah, yeah. John Williams also does well for that. But yeah, co coding. Yeah. Metallica, early Metallica. Yeah. That's that oh, is that's uh, a good yeah. One. yeah, yeah. Maybe there's a whole podcast just around, you know, music for different uh, different occasions. 
Yeah, but it's, inter- it's interesting though, isn't it? Because it's like, I'll just look at it and go, hmm, probably like early 2000s dance music, like trance music for coding and Daft Punk and anything electronic around that area. Era, that's it. That's my playlist done. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. Happily. Yeah, I mean, if, you, if you're into the dance music for coding, then uh, Hallucinogen. Oh, yes. Yeah, that's, that's, that's good. Cool. That, is, um, that, is, that is spot on for coding. I know the the guys that run .NET Rocks. They they also have uh, music to code by. So they they specifically written music that's designed to help you code. There is, so, uh, is it so there's a rhyme code as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You need to do this. Yeah. Yeah. But maybe what we'll do, we'll we'll tweet out uh, some of our our favourites as well, and we'll we'll share them out on the uh, Grey Hat Beard uh, Twitter. Yeah. It's, um, uh... Yeah. In terms of being productive and focused, I, I think we probably need to draw things to an end uh, a, a little bit there. But uh, it's been a great discussion. Uh, and I hope if not new ideas for some people, I hope at least it's reminded you some of those things go. On. I'm sure some of it will be new to people. Uh, we'll try and get some links to, to things like the uh, cherry tomatoes um, in, into the show notes uh, with, with some advice and maybe some uh, links to Al, some of your talks you're giving about uh, staying productive over the next few uh Yep. next few months all online obviously oh but, well uh, yes well, at the moment all online it's going to be a busy yeah. autumn let's put it that way absolutely yeah. Yeah. so um but no i think it's been a really good talk um as we mentioned at the beginning uh, if you would like to get involved come and join us uh go onto the website look at upcoming shows fill out the forms there we'd love to hear from more of you uh we would love to get your feedback so you know go onto spotify go onto apple um we we did have a review on there so thank you very much whoever that was uh we we are officially a five star podcast which is great to know um otherwise thank you very much i've been gray i've been hat i've been beard we need, we need to get better and quicker at that. Uh, thank <laughs> and goodbye. Bye bye. <laughs>
Thanks for listening to Grey Hat Beard Podcast. The song Drink Up My Mateys was brought to you by Black Bones under a non-commercial attribution license.